What is going on guys, DBG here, and today we are going to be doing the yearly update to the top 10 best overall cards in my team history. Initially we had a 10 through 1, and I honestly think there's it's tough to kind of do that, because a lot of like overpowered cards are overpowered specifically for their times, and for example a card might be completely more dominant say in one game than and a card is another game and it's really really hard to compare like how dominant x player is in a one 2k compared to the other like it's hard to compare for example this year's taco to last year's yao like things like that are hard to compare but we're gonna be going over 10 players every my team is represented except nba 2k 13 last year we had akeem on the list but akeem has gone out but yeah so it's been nine my teams and Eight of them are represented. So anyway, first player has to be pre-patch Zach Levine. This card was 74 overall and was the best card in the game until about February. It didn't matter. And I was even using this guy in Endgame 2K15. Basically, there was a almost a glitch where if you ran baseline, if you ran baseline, sprinted and held square, you would get that one of those animations every single time. You would literally trigger some weird dunk animation. And it was either a foul, an and one, or a dunk every time. So once you got into a position to dunk it, there was nothing that anyone could do to stop it. You couldn't block dunk, you couldn't do anything. Attack baseline, trigger a dunk animation, boom, dunk every single time. There were some guys that were OP, like LeBron was OP. But I mean, Levine was different. He was different. And the fact is, Cash Nasty figured this out on launch day. So from launch day until they patched it, literally all pe everyone used to do was just rim run with Levine. Eddie was silver, so you use him in all seeds over TTP. The best player in that game. Then, this guy right here, AK-47. So, Andre Kurilenko was just... He, him and Hito Turkle were probably the best cards in 2K19. But Andre Kurilenko kept his base 11 the whole year. As well as that, he also did have the normal 4 leaner as well, which was super OP. And he was a little bit of a better defender than Hito Turkle. Although, Hito dribbled the ball way better. So, there were strengths and weaknesses to both of them. But, this was the definitive AK-47. This was the best of them all. This was the Galaxy Opal AK. Was the Pink Diamond more relevant? 100%. The Pink Diamond was way, way more relevant than the uh, Opal because people used it more. And the Diamond was the most relevant. But the best of them all, no question about it, was the Galaxy Opal. At the end of this game, NBA 2K19, he was the best player in the game. He was unstoppable. He was basically every single player's point guard. Every single player at the end of the year had some version of AK as their point guard. And he was just unguardable. Best release in the game, best laner in the game, one of the best defenders in the game, and was like the best passer in the game, a half dimer. He's the best player by far. Then we are on to 2K14 with Michael Jeffrey Jordan. So MJ was the best player in 2K14, and this was the definitive version of MJ. I personally, the card that I had the most success with was the 1991 MJ, but this was the duplicate glitch where you could use multiple of the same player. And it was a really common tactic in that game to literally use. Michael Jordan, a point guard, Michael Jordan, a shooting guard, and Michael Jordan, a small forward. And then off the bench, Michael Jordan, a point guard, Michael Jordan, a shooting guard, Michael Jordan, a small forward. LeBron, and then LeBron is your two power forwards, and then just people run different centers. That was a common cheese tactic, to run six Michael Jordans in your squad, two LeBron James cards, and then you would have AS, two different centers at least. But it was crazy. Michael Jordan was so good. For some reason, he had the best jump shot in the game. His mid-range was basically unmissable. This card here had like a 93 ball, so we just didn't use the best shooter in the game as well. This MJ was by far the best card in 2K14. MJ was great in 15 as well, but 2K14 was the peak of Michael Jordan after 2K11 in 2K games. Then we got this year's Bowl Bowl. So unfortunately, I only have footage of him on current gen. This guy is way, way better on next gen, but it was a close one between Taco Fall and Bowl Bowl, and I went with Bowl Bowl. Again, he was out a little bit longer than Taco, which is one thing, not too much longer. But Bull Bull, like his shooting was just spectacular. He could handle the ball well. He was super OP. And it wasn't like a taco fall where if you put him into a bad player's hands, they couldn't shoot with him and he'd be a liability. Everyone could shoot with Bull Bull on either gen. Brook Lopez base 99 every single stat, long wingspan. On next gen, he's out here curry sliding. Again, him versus taco is a very, very close one for who the most OP player is in this game. And in a very tight when I'm going to go with Bowl Bowl because he was just unguardable. And also the fact that the Pink Diamond Bowl Bowl 
was just so good as well. He was just the most iconic player in 2K21. Then, T-Mac. T-Mac, T-Mac, T-Mac. This card had the biggest, like, he didn't miss. You could shoot, if you shot anywhere within the halfway line, he didn't miss. This is back when 2K17, the Hall of Fame range extender, was way further out than this year. Or Hall of Fame Limitless was way further out than range extender was this year. The court felt bigger because they made the player model smaller in 2K17. And you, it was basically unguardable. People would zigzag. This is back in wa when wagers, and if you played in tournaments, everyone had to on-ball. It used to be a rule. So the game used to just be zigzagging iso ball, and Tracy McGrady was the most unguardable player in that game. Momentum cross, go right by somebody, and he was dunking at the basket. He did everything. Like, you couldn't play too tight for, to him because he would run by you and dunk. You couldn't back off because he would shoot the ball from the halfway line. This card came out in like March, February or March, and he was the best player for the rest of that year, and it was not particularly close. This guy was an unstoppable player, an absolutely unstoppable player in the game. And then from 2K18, we have got Yanis Antetokounmpo. So you're thinking one hot zone, how great was this Yanis? Oh guys, this guy was unguardable. In the 2K18 era of the blow by, this guy was unguardable. So his release was super. Like it was one of the best releases in the game, one of the easiest releases in the game to green. And again, the era of the five out blow by. You call a five out, blow by somebody, dunk every single time. He was an unguardable force, unguardable. You either played him at point guard or you played him at center. One or the other, it didn't matter. He was equally as unguardable no matter what position he played. He was so good that there was a, he basically, there were gatekeepers all the time for his set. So thankfully not a lot of people had him, but if you did, you can see it right there, the blow by animation. Basically no one had clamps in that game. Giannis was just unguardable. It would be like, imagine invincible Giannis in this year's game, but nobody has clamps. Then, <laughs> Steph Curry. <laughs> 2K16 diamond Steph Curry, who shot from everywhere. Like we think shooting's crazy now. This Steph Curry, legitimately shot my beer. And this was not the break the game Steph. Break the game Steph was an only playing out thing for like two days. This was Steph Curry, his diamond card. But every Steph Curry, once they introduced the limitless range badge, it was different. Him and Channing Fry were the two guys that could shoot from anywhere. Like if he caught the ball inside the half, it was green. Or it wasn't even green, it was in. Limitless range in 2K16 was one of the most ridiculous things you've ever seen. And you could give limitless range to anybody. So if people knew what they were doing, LeBron James would have been pulling up from half court. But goal limitless range, especially on Steph Curry, because people didn't really know too much about badges, was crazy. Because he could literally, literally chuck up half courts and they were going consistently. Steph in 2K16 was pretty much unguardable. Then 2K20, Yao Ming. Curry sliding, Yao Ming. Unfortunately, people didn't really know how to curry slide. I was one of the few people that used to abuse curry slides with Yao on the EU servers anyway. But curry sliding was a lot more difficult to do last year than this year but this Yao Ming if I was to make a list I don't think this was the most OP card in all of NBA 2k20 because I personally believe that there was one slightly more OP player just because he was out for longer but Yao Ming on the 24th of July the guy came out and he was just god or 23rd of July I can't remember but his dunking was unbelievable his shooting was unbelievable his really he was way easier to green with him last year than it is this year and his defense was the best in the game there were no other giants by the way there were no tacos there were no sim Vulars to compete with him the only player that could really slightly compete with him was kareem and anyone else it was just ggs you saw there curry sliding off screens he was out here shooting consistently the best defensive player in the game goat yao ming don't even talk about invincible yeah he's nothing on go from last year then 2K15, Carmelo Anthony. This guy right here, he was different. So once they patched the dunking around like February, March, the one thing 2K brought in in patch four was basically that you could not contest jump shots. And Carmelo Anthony had the fastest and best release in the game. Up until realistically 2K18, he had like the fastest and best, he had an okay release in 19. But you literally could not. You couldn't defend him. Patch four. You could not contest Melo. He would walk, people would walk down the floor with Carmelo Anthony, shoot heavies, and they would all go in. They would all go in. 
Thank God these Pink Diamond Locker Co. players were only obtainable by people getting lucky. Thank God in EU, I think I was the only person who I've ever even seen with them in Europe. But my God, lads, this card was genuinely unguardable in 2K15. But then, in my opinion, the most OP player in the history of my team is Kareem. Kareem came out two months before Yao Ming, had a better release than Yao Ming, and had a dribble glitch behind the back. Was he quite as glitchy as Yao? No, but it was not far off. He also had the skyhook, and if you knew anything about post hooks in that game, post hooks were super OP. This guy, for two straight months, it was a case, well, not, actually no, not two straight months, one month until Wiseman came out. But before Wiseman came out with Kareem, it was literally a case of, you either have Kareem or you lose. No ifs or buts about it. It was either you have Kareem or you lose against someone who has Kareem. Was one of the best shooters in the game. That release base 12 was one of the easy, not 12. I don't, can't even remember what that release is. Because I know 12 is Draymond, but it was one of the easiest releases to green in the game. He, his skyhook was unguardable. He was the best defensive player in the game. He was one of the best shooters, one of the, was the best driver in the game and could dribble glitch. This card was a seven foot two Yanis with a better release. The most OP player potentially in my team history, to be completely honest. So yeah, that is pretty much it, lads. These are the top 10 overall cards in my team history. Let me know what you guys think, if you guys have any other options. I know a lot of people will say Yao, but in my opinion, just because of how much longer he was in the game, I will put Kareem over Yao. And I do believe at the end of the game, it was still even a tight one. But uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Another year, another one of these videos. This is the third, fourth year in a row we've made this video, kind of at the end of the year. And it'll be interesting to see what players from NBA 2K22, if any, end up making this list. And considering the way 2K are going, it's, I'm pretty confident that at least one from NBA 2K22 makes the list. So yeah, that is pretty much it, lads. That's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.